Hey everyone, welcome to another tier list video for season 11 I'm making. Uh, this is going to be for 11.3. And so this is pretty much what people are calling the quality of life buff for a bunch of characters in the game. And so we're just going to go through the picks and bans, what I think should be picked out of each role, and what I think should be banned. This is mostly applied to high level conquest. Uh, I play in master and grandmaster lobbies. So this is pretty much what I see when I play and what I think is like going to be the most effective and what I think is super effective. So let's get right into it. By the way, before I start this, if you guys don't know, I'm a support main. So support's pretty much going to be what I know the most. And then all these other roles are kind of what I've observed or even played myself here and there. So let's get into this. Let's start off with bands. There's going to be some common bands from my previous tier list that I made for season 11. When it first released, Thoth, Thanatos, I think are just the two most broken characters right now in ranked. Thoth, in, or sorry, Thanatos in particular, I just personally ban him every game. If you're against me, you're not going to get Thanatos. No one is. <laughs> I ban that character every game. I think it's because like they just feel really, really powerful. Thanatos can execute a tank at 40% HP, right? He's got that threshold, a really, really large execution. And so I think him having that and tanks being so powerful right now and having to step up the front line, taking a lot of poke, a lot of damage, especially with some of the other characters you'll see on this list, like AMC, for example, you do take a lot of poke in this current meta. Thanatos just seems to thrive off that. And so his execute is just so hard to play against if you're playing as a tank. Thoth, another character, he just gets so much damage off as an artillery style mage. He gets so much damage off and it's really hard to dive him. So these characters, I just recommend banning every single game. And then Thor's, I think, a really common ban. This character's been banned for like two, three seasons straight already. So you just slap him on a Thor ban. Karen, I think, is also a really solid ban still. Even after his nerfs, he's still going to do a lot of damage. I still think his best role is going to be a mid lane. And of course, Athena, even after her nerfs, again, she's she's still just very, very annoying, right? Like a dash taunt. Um, no matter how many times you nerf her ult, she's still going to have that dash taunt capability. So these are the bans I would suggest. Now, obviously, you don't have to ban these characters. You know, if there's like a one trick in your lobby or one trick in your game, say someone's one tricking a Wheelix, for example, like you might want to ban that, right? But I do recommend one of these five characters, at least, um, especially these two, these two in particular, like. Highly prior the Thoth. If you guys aren't prioring the Thoth, he should be banned. If you guys not first pick, try to try to first ban Thoth, right? Or or the Thanatos, one of those two. But let's go into support. So for support, there's actually a lot of really good characters. I think right now, Fafnir feels really good after his buffs. And by the way, I'll, I'll put um the buffs for each of these characters that I mentioned on the top right of the screen. But Fafnir got a really nice slice of life buff. So whenever Fafnir jumps, he gets rooted in place. And he was rooted for about like a second, maybe 0.5 seconds after he jumped. And so they pretty much negated that. They didn't like completely take away the root. You still feel like a very slight root, but it's like 0.1 seconds. So you can barely feel it, right? So it, I kind of describe it as like, he's sort of like sliding on Scotty Ice after he, after he jumps. Like it feels really, really good, really strong. You no longer get locked down after your jump. So Fafnir is actually really good. And I actually thought he was pretty good before that buff. So that buff just made him even better. So if you haven't played Fafnir, I highly suggest you try him out. He's he's actually really strong right now. His stuns are really potent. Ever since they took away class passives and Guardians no longer get the CCR that they once got, Fafnir is actually strived for that because he has a lot of CC, a lot of stuns, a lot of lockdown. So Guardians now, unless they're building CCR in their items, they're going to take the full stun duration from his stun. So Fafnir feels really good. Another one, I think this one's a bit hidden, is Ymir. Ymir is like a hidden gem, I think, right now. I've played a lot of Ymir games. I think I went on like a 10 win streak with them. This character feels really, really good. He has a lot of lockdown. He, he punches a lot of the meta characters right now, as we'll get into. And he feels really, really strong, in particular in the early game. He has the highest base stats out of any Guardian in the game. I'm talking about in terms of HP and prots. And so like in the early game, it's really hard to kill him, especially because of his passive. His passive is 10% damage reduction to whoever he hits between having the highest base stats and then them doing 10% reduced damage to you because, you know, you could be hitting them with abilities. Um, he's he's going to feel really strong. And what's cool is he actually scales really well up to late game as well. He still feels really strong in the late game. He feels very tanky. So you can't really like say that for all the Guardians. Most of them, I think right now you can say that for. But in particular, Ymir is going to feel really, really strong. So I highly recommend trying him out as well. Next one up we have is Sobek. Sobek is, he, he's just kind of been meta all season. He, he's pretty self-explanatory. Very tanky because he gets base prots. His pluck's annoying. He also got a buff as well. A nice slice of life buff. He can now go under walls. So for example, say you're against a Ymir, right? And you wall up a Sobek and Sobek pops into his ult. Well, Sobek now in his ult can actually go under your mirror wall and the Odin wall and all those kinds of walls. So that's actually a really good buff for Sobek. He can no longer get, as long as he has ult up, of course, he can no longer get trapped behind walls. 
The next one is Maui. Now, I don't really see anybody play Maui. I play a lot of Maui. I think it's very fun, of course. I mean, Maui's got to be one of the funnest Guardians in the game, right? But I think a lot of people lose on him and, and associate him with a loss. I've been playing a lot of Maui recently, and he's felt extremely strong. Kind of like Ymir a little bit, where I don't, I don't really see anybody else playing him. Some people have told me I'm like literally the only Maui player that they see. This character just i don't know his kit just he's got he's got great engage he gets really good early pressure one thing you'll see on this list especially for the guardians is the fact that they uh, most of them get really good early pressure right i think we're in a super early pressure based meta right now uh, we have been this entire season and so like any guardian that's going to get you that early base pressure ymir maui uh sobek all these characters like atlas Ares, and, and terra they're all they're all going to feel really really good so Maui feels really good. Um, it's kind of hard to explain why, but I think it's because, again, his early pressure and the fact that he has a ton of engagement onto the enemy. And as long as you're hitting his abilities, he's he's good. Uh, I know a lot of people struggle with the one, kind of like with Ares chains a little bit, so people might sort of stray away from him, but give him a try. See, see how he feels. Uh, the next one we have is Terra. Now, Terra actually got a really interesting buff. I don't think she needed this, by the way. But so you know how you go to lane level two already, right? After you clear the green and purple with your ADC, you're now level two before the first wave hits. Well, Terra actually got a buff to where now she always has her one. So she essentially can go to lane level two with three abilities, all right? So she can get her two in or three level two and she always has her one now. Now her one's on like a 20 second cooldown or whatever the case, again, we'll, we'll have it up in the top, right? But her one's on like a 20 second cooldown. So it's not, and it doesn't do damage, but she can still break, obviously, her rocks. So what's really strong about her is, well, you get to lane, you 1-3 the wave, the wave's dead, and you still have a really good fight because now you still have your stun up, you still have your 2 up, and you can literally just fight them. So Terra early pressure is absurd right now. She's got great, fantastic early pressure. Now, that buff obviously only really applies to the early game, you know, to the early wave, but at the same time, too, just getting that pressure can really set you up for purple buffs and and uh shield camps and all that kind of stuff so it can actually set you up to really get ahead in lane and set you up for the rest of the game uh the next one we have up is kepri i'm biased towards kepri kepri's been my favorite guardian pretty much since i started playing uh since i became a support main and i've always thought he's good so I, i'm always gonna put kepri in a top tier pretty much unless i think he feels really really bad in a certain meta um i'm just gonna put him in the top tier he feels really good this meta he's felt really good last minute meta before that so on and so forth so uh, me personally, if you can play Kepri, I think Kepri's just always a good play. Next one we have up is Atlas. So Atlas, similar to Maui, I think, feels very strong. First of all, he's got very easy damage. Al Atlas is very easy to play. All right, like all his damage is AoE. He gives you a lot of lane pressure because of just how much damage he has and, and CC he has as well, level two. And the fact that he's also really tanky. So we, we talked about Ymir having the highest base stats. Well, I think Atlas is up there as well. Obviously not as high as Ymir, but Atlas is up there in terms of the highest guardian base stats for protections and health. But he also gets a dash, right? Like he gets to be able to cleanse slows and he's knock up immune. So he gets a dash and he's very mobile and tanky. So he's hard to kill. He's sort of hard to lock down depending on who you pick. And he does a ton of damage and he will scale to late game as well. So Atlas feels very strong right now. Um, and I highly recommend picking him, especially in the lower ranks, right? A lot of people ask me, you know, what should I play in the lower ranks, especially if my carries aren't doing damage or good follow-up? Well, Alice is a really solid pick. Sobic is too. Sobic will always be a good pick. But Alice is a really, really solid pick for that. So I would definitely recommend playing Alice. And even, um, we don't have him on this list, but even Bacchus too, wherever he is. But Bacchus, I actually, I think, feels pretty strong right now. Here he is. And um, the reason I didn't put him on this list is because I don't think Bacchus really scales that well to late game as a Guardian. Like, he still does a lot of damage, but he he makes... Box's big thing is he makes lane really, really easy. Okay? So, Box makes lane really, really easy for you and your ADC. But I, he just doesn't scale well to late. So, I didn't put him on here. But if you are looking to get that absurd early pressure, Box is a good pick. Next up, we have Ares. So, Ares is a hit or miss. Um, if it's a bad Ares game, Ares is going to lose you the game. But if it's a good Ares game, Ares will win you the game. All right? So, Ares is... The, the reason why is because Ares is pretty much like a counter pick character like i would never if, if if i'm in a serious game i'm never top twoing in aries right i'm always like bottom twoing maybe bottom three in aries depending on their first two to three picks but the thing about aries is that if he's in the characters for example like ymir um or like ganesh like he's gonna get locked down and he's gonna lose that matchup really really hard baron is another one like baron support 
super heavy counter pick in the Aries. So characters that don't really care about his chains at all are gonna farm Aries, right? And so if we look at like other characters that aren't necessarily supports like Marty, um, Artemis, like some of these that are, that I think are pretty meta, like Sukiyomi even, like these characters are gonna farm Aries because they don't care about his chains and that's Aries' main lockdown. And a lot of them also have CC immune alts. So Aries can't really do much to them. But on the other hand, Aries does counter a lot of guardians. So for example, Aries is really good to Atlas. He's, he's good to Kepri, very good to Terra, Maui, and Fafnir and Sobek, right? So he, he's really good into a lot of characters, but it just really depends. So if they have a lot of these kinds of characters, Ares is gonna, Ares can win you the game. But if they have a lot of like characters like Ymir and, and Artemis, Ares is gonna lose you the game. That's why I say he's kind of like a counter pick, right? You want to pick him in, in sort of like the bottom three area, I would say. But that's where I think that character lies. The next up we have, last up we have Ganesh. Now Ganesh I think has been good for the last couple seasons straight. I don't think Ganesh is like any special. Again, we talked about having early pressure right now. Ganesh doesn't really gain early pressure. But I think the one thing Ganesh does do well is he really counters dive. So for example, one of the reasons why I don't like Bacchus in the late game is because if the enemy has a Ganesh, you can't play the game, right? You jump in, now you're silenced. And that's the same for a lot of these other characters as well. Ganesh, you're always playing for your backliners. I would never try to, you can engage with your ult, but I would never try to like step away from your backliners. That's how I would play them. If you're doing that and you're peeling for them, then like Ganesh is going to be a pretty solid pick. If you have two people that you think are going to carry the game or one player that you think is going to carry the game, I think Ganesh will be solid. But again, he lacks that early game pressure. So just kind of be wary with that, right? If you don't have anybody you think is going to carry the game, like any players that you notice or anything like that, then like Ganesh is not going to be a good pick, right? You might as well just pick like the Atlas or something of that sort. So next up we have mid lane. Um, so mid lane actually got some really cool buffs recently. Uh, Agni, for example, no longer gets rooted while he's bombing. So Agni gets a 50% slow instead while he bombs. So he's still slowed a little bit, but he's no longer rooted in place, which is really, really good. I've always thought Agni did a lot of damage and was, you know, very strong, but that root kind of like didn't really put him in a top tier. But now that that root's taken away, I've seen a lot more Agni being played recently, and he feels really oppressive to play against. I've also played with him on my team, and he feels very good to play with as well. So definitely try out Agni if you're a mid laner and you haven't already. Definitely feel his buffs. Issa also got a buff. Her wing gust now is like 25% quicker, I think. So like she shoots out her, she pretty much has higher DPS because she shoots out her damage faster. Um, so I've been actually seeing quite a bit of Issa get played and I forgot how annoying that character is to play against, especially in mid lane, because she's just a whole bunch of extra CC that you just don't want to deal with, right? Like if you're diving into an Issa Ganesh, like good luck, right? <laughs> like it's going to be really, really hard, but yeah, I, I do think Issa is actually pretty decent right now. I've seen some players kind of flop with her, but I've seen other players play really, really well with her. And we've won a couple games. I've won a couple games just because I had an Issa at mid who just absolutely farmed in the late game, did an absurd amount of damage, and that CC was super clutch. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think she's in a really good spot right now, especially with her changes. Cuckoo. So Cuckoo's just always been good um, for the past, like, season, season and a half or so. Cuckoo's kind of up here with Thoth. Thoth is, by the way, if, if you're not banning Thoth, Thoth is like the number one mid pick, I think, right now. Um, FYI. And that goes for like any of these characters on this list. But yeah, I think like Cuckoo and Thoth have been just sort of top tier mages for the past season, season and a half or so. So um, nothing really special about him. He's kind of like Sobek, right? He's there. He's just a really good pick. Uh, he just does a lot of damage. He's like kind of hard to get a little bit because he has slow immunity. He has a really massive speed boost. So he's just annoying. Scylla is kind of like the Ymir, but for mid, I think she's sort of a, like a little hidden gem right now, a little hidden gem pick. Scylla does a ton of damage. She's got decent lockdown with her root cripple. I mean, it's 1.75, I believe, at all ranks now in terms of how long you're crippled for in Rudin. So like her lockdown is really good, especially in the tanks, and her damage output is absurd. So with like some of the mid changes and these items that are getting picked up right now, like Doom Orb and all that kind of stuff, like some more flat pen too. She just feels really, really strong with her abilities. Every time I play against a Scylla, she's like one-shotting somebody or she's just doing a ton of damage. So I do recommend that you try out Scylla if you haven't already and you like her. There are other mages, by the way, that you can pick, like Merlin I think is good right now and all these, but I didn't want to like fill up this entire chart with mid laners, if that makes sense. Like I just kind of wanted to do what I thought were some of like the highest picks in my opinion. So the last four are actually just Bluestone Hunters. Now you can play these Hunters, of course, in ADC. I don't recommend it as much. I think Bluestone Hunters are mostly for mid lane, but Bluestone Hunters are ability-based Hunters. So these are Hunters that go Bluestone as their starter. They output a massive amount of damage. Now, guys, don't get me wrong. I don't think I would ever, I don't think I ever thought I would ever put Neath on a tier list before. But here we are, uh, season 11, 11.3, Neath is on this tier list. I played this character countless times 
And this character is as annoying as it gets, right? Her global alt and just the amount of damage she does late game. I mean, with these characters, especially Chiron, AMC, and Neath, I'm seeing players easily get 60, 80K damage in a game, depending on how long the game goes, of course. But like in like 40, 50 minute games, like I'm seeing 80K damage. And you, like, even though those are long games, like you usually don't see those numbers, not with mid laners. Maybe you're f seeing 50, 60K at most. But yeah, these characters feel insane right now. Um, just their poke is wild. And I think Bluestone just needs a hot nerf. So these characters are still going to be good. I think this patch was kind of like, hey, let's put mages a little bit back on the map. That's why they buffed some of the items, you know, gave a little bit more flat pen and, and gave more power and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I think overall, like these are probably some of the best mid laners that you can pick right now. I don't think you can go wrong with either of these characters. And again, if you don't want to pick these mid laners, you can still pick some other ones. Like I said, I, I think Merlin's still good right now. I think Morgan Le Fay is pretty good if you play Morgan Le Fay. So. so for jungle, it's, you know, Thanatos Thor, your classic two characters, right? I mentioned why Thanatos should be banned earlier or picked. I think this character is just absurdly OP in any rank game. Thor, Thor is like the Sobek, or sorry, Thor is like, yeah, Sobek and Kakulkin. He's literally just always going to be good. Um, but Erlong, I think, has actually shown a lot of really good stats recently in, in my games, at least. Like, he, he's got a lot of damage. He's getting a lot of kills. He's a very big nuisance. So I think Erlong's actually like really good right now or, you know, pretty good. I want to say he's top of the crop, but like, I think he's still a really good jungler. He dishes, he dishes out a lot of damage. Sukiyomi does a ton of damage. If you can play Sukiyomi, like play this character, get to late game, you're going to be doing so much damage. It's kind of like a blue stone hunter in mid. You're just doing so much damage sometimes for no reason. Cause you got a lot of AOE, you got a lot of like slow CC and like your damage is just wild. I don't know. It's, it's crazy. If you can play Sukiyomi, play him this character is this character is insane and he hits hard uh susano always been good i mean I, I don't know a meta where susano wasn't good to be honest with you maybe like three seasons ago three four seasons ago i don't know so no surprise here that he's on this tier list uh naja i think is actually in a pretty decent spot right now Naja's a really good setup jungle so Naja, i don't think is really going to carry a game but he's really good for setup right so like especially with a lot of these really good mages getting played like these are all secure mages thoth eset kakulkin and Scylla are all like really good secure mages and so if you pick Naja you know you're gonna have follow-up especially in the mid lane you know you're gonna have follow-up off your alts right Scylla ult, Kakulkan ult, um, Isad ult can be iffy but then also Thoth ult right so you, you have really good follow-up off your alts so I, I do think he's really good if they do have a blue stone hunter probably not the best to pick Naja again you, you got to pick according to your comp and I would definitely pick him with some of these mages that I put up here so next one is Daji okay Daji is like interesting because not that many people can play her i feel like that well however if you can play her well i think she's really good i think she's been good for a while and i just think daji is insane she gets to banish herself in a fight of course which you know everybody's running around like chickens with their head cut off or she's like daji herself is zoning out the back line by not doing anything just standing on a totem pole because people don't want to get hit by her chains right they don't want to get hit by her ult and in the meantime your soul laner is diving the enemy back line and getting hit the entire time so I think Daji just does a ton of damage late game. Like she can one shot carries uh, if she's full build. And of course, like the fact that she can banish herself and keep herself in the fight for a super long amount of time just makes her a really good character. I've played against a lot of Dajis and some are good, but like I used to have this saying actually last split, which was I've never seen a Daji lose. And for the most part, that's true. Maybe I've seen a couple losses here and there, but like nine times out of 10, a Daji's winning the game, whether that Daji's on my team or the enemy team. Next up, we have Mammon. No surprise here again, just like Susano. Mammon's just a good character. Her kit's pretty self-explanatory. She can banish herself. She just does a ton of damage. She's got a bit of CC, right? And also, too, if your mid laner is going to Bluestone Hunter, then you can make up for the magical damage by going Mammon Jungle as well. And you can also play Mammon mid if you want. I haven't really seen it too much, but uh, if you want to, you can play Mammon mid, sure. But yeah, Mammon's just going to be a really good pick regardless. Okay, so next up, we have ADC. So Nut, she just got introduced in the ranked a few days ago. I'm making this video like two, three days after the patch. She just got introduced in the ranked. I had the opportunity to play her a little bit. She feels amazing. I've seen other players play her, um, like both on my team and the enemy team. And she just feels like she farms. Whether she wins or loses, she's always having a super high impact, especially as an ADC. So I think I think Nut is like really, really good right now. The only thing that's a little iffy is her alt, to be honest. I think her alt may be like people just need to get better with. But besides her alt, like her her clear is really good. Her lane clear is amazing. It's like Rama Astral Arrows, but 
a bit better and like a little bit more consistent, I want to say. But yeah, I, try her out if you're an ADC player. I think she's really good right now. The next up we have on her. So on her is a character, same with Hachi, on her and Hachi, that I think have just been the two dominant hunters, I want to say, in the past season. Hachi, I don't, I don't think they're really going away anytime soon. Both their kits are really good. Whenever they gave on her passive attack speed, so he got, you know, because on her doesn't have a stim. So he got more auto attack speed per second uh, just by pretty much, I guess, leveling. He's just been good. And I think he'll remain good. The same thing with Hachi. I mean, Hachi didn't get that, but Hachi got sort of like a mini kit rework a little bit. And he got a lot more attack speed in his kit, both from his passive and his two. So you combine those and you get a lot of attack speed. So these two characters have been pretty dominant. So no surprise I'm going to put them in the ADC role. I still think Hachi is probably like the best hunter in the game. I, I've thought this for at least an entire season and he'll remain the best hunter in the game in my opinion until like they either really nerf his numbers or just kind of do another kit change to him. Artemis is kind of like the hidden gem pick I think of ADC. Um, she she's like one of the best late game hunters. Okay so if you can, if you can get out of lane you're going to dominate the late game. Why? Because you have a lot of CC. You have a stun that literally can't miss. They dive you, press four. Guess what? Now everybody around you is getting stunned. And that stun can even leash kind of like Zeus Chain Lightning to enemies, people in the back line if the fight's close enough, right? And she does a lot of damage too. Her passive allows her to do more damage to enemies that are CC. So she's going to do a ton of damage. So Artemis, I think you just got to get through a laning phase. Her laning phase can be a little rough, I think, in the beginning, especially if you're getting camped by the enemy jungler, which, by the way, the enemy jungler should be camping in Artemis, I want to say. But at the same time, too, if the enemy jungler has blink and now you're level five Artemis, it's kind of hard for them to stick onto you because you have a lot of CC yourself, right? But once you get past lane, you're just going to do a ton of damage. This character can can hard carry a game late game. Like this is your, this is the definition of an ADC Artemis is. Heim, I think, is actually pretty good right now. Heim just got one of those nice slice of life buffs as well. So before, whenever Heim ulted and say he missed or tried to ult to get away, it would kind of like stun lock him for a little bit. Not stun lock him, but... He couldn't use any abilities or auto attack for about like a second after he ulted. Well, they pretty much removed that, right? It's kind of like with Fafnir, how they sort of removed, for the most part, they like removed the root on his three. They kind of did that with Heim. They like removed that interaction. So now pretty much like off rip, off alting, Heim can now use abilities and auto attack. So it feels really, really good. Uh, if you haven't tried the new Heim yet, definitely try him out. He feels great. Let's see, we went over Hachi. Uh, last but not least, Freya. So. I don't have any other magical ADCs on this list. I think all the magical ADCs are honestly still just trash, but I do think Freya is really, really strong. Uh, so one of her nice slice of life buffs is now she can like cancel her pulse. So she uses her pulse and say she wants to cancel early because you got to back up or like everything's been cleared. You can cancel and get on cooldown right away. Well, I've played against a few Freyas here and there since the patch, not too many, but I played against enough to know that this character deserves to be on this tier list. She like is so aids to dive you forget how aids playing against the Freya is until you start playing against the Freya. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, nice. She can banish herself for four seconds. And she just melts tanks late game because she's Freya. And she also has, like, one of the best setups in the game, which is her whoop. So this character, I think, is really strong. She's the only magical ADC that I think is actually strong. One thing I... One character I actually forgot to put on this tier list that also got a really nice test life buff. I was thinking about this with Freya. But uh, Zeus. So Zeus can now cancel his shield earlier so his shield like he, his shield can go on cooldown zeus already did a ton of damage and he he feels amazing right now i've played against a couple of zeus's i've had him on my team and he absolutely just feels insane so try to play zeus he he kind of like falls into the positioning error where it's like people don't know how to position with them they're going to get farmed right that's on them but if you do know how to position well uh, and you're cognizant of the enemy jungler so on and so forth then i, I think like you get this character late game he will one shot everybody um, so definitely try them out with the shield changes. But all right, so last but not least, let's go over Solane. So Solane did have, um, I would say, probably one of the biggest meta shifts in terms of characters out of all the roles um, over the last update. So one thing we have here is Serb. Serb actually feels amazing right now. If you guys have watched Final K's content recently, uh, he posted up a short of him one-shotting a Jingwei with Serb. And guess who that Jingwei was? That was me. Yep. So Serb actually feels like really nuts. His... First of all, it's Proch Red combined with Void Damaru. So Void Damaru is pretty much Void Stone for people that don't know what that is. Void Stone back in like season nine before they took it out. So his Proch Red combined with the Proch Red from Void Damaru and the fact that you can get like Glorious Pridwin, you can get Mystical Mail, you can get Thorns. All of those are magical damage, which means that 
with all the proc shredder you have in your kit, you're just giving way more damage to those items. And so you're practically one-shotting backline enemy carries, right? Now, not every game is going to be a serve game, of course. Like, if they have a lot of CC, like, if you're into an ESA and stuff like that, it might be really hard to get off your two. But I do think this character is absurdly strong in solo. You can also play him support. I play him support a little bit. He feels all right, like, but he, he's mainly a soul laner, I think. Cthulhu is another character. This character arguably got, like, one of the best changes out of the newest patch. So Cthulhu no longer has to animate his two. So he calls up his arm to cast down his two, and then his arm, I guess, retracts now instead of staying up there for the entire duration. So now his two will go off, and you can literally do whatever you want while it's going off, right? Like, you can you can use any ability that you want. Uh, so that feels really, really good. So you no longer have to cancel your two anymore. That change in and of itself is enough to actually put him on the map, and a lot of people have been playing him, and he feels very strong. Uh, Vamana. Vamana's been good for a while. Uh, I don't... You know, to be honest with you, Vamana would not be on this list because I haven't seen him in a while. But then I went up against Haddix a few days ago and he just baby stomped the hell out of us with Vamana and practically 1v5'd. And that is the only reason he's on this list, if I'm being completely honest. So Haddix practically 1v5'd us with Vamana. And I said, all right, well, this guy's going on the list. So Vamana's on the list. We all know what Vamana does by now. He doesn't need an explanation. Let's go next. Odin. Odin got a couple of really good changes with the newest update. So Odin no longer so odin now like skips the homing spear so his, his spear used to have three ticks right like it would tick it would charge up a spear tick again charge up a spear so on and so forth his stun would be the very last spear well now it skips the second spear so odin can get off his stun a lot quicker now and what's even crazier too is before odin's shield had to be fully charged for his bird bomb to do 15 percent more damage but now it no longer has to be fully charged. So say you take even one HP of damage onto a shield or, or 50% or whatever the case, his shield is still doing 50% more damage when he's bird bombing, which is crazy. Or just, I guess, just in general, not just bird bomb, but we all associate it with bird bombing, right? So Odin actually does a ton of damage right now. And of course, he's really good into characters. Like, look at these, right? Like, look at these blue stone hunters. He's very good into these two in particular. And he's good into a lot of these like mid laners that can't get out of his cage. So yeah, o Odin feels very, very strong right now. His damage is absurd, actually. You try him out if you haven't. Just try out his damage. You'll see exactly what I mean. All right, so next up we have Wukong. I think Wukong's like sort of always been there. He's been really good. Uh, he can banish himself just like Daji, and he just has a lot of damage into a fight as well. A lot of mobility. He's kind of hard to lock down, and he actually feels really tanky now if you build him correctly. So yeah, I, I think um, these are going to be my main soul laners. There are still characters here. Like, for example, Whale was being prioritized a lot. I don't know why Whale isn't really picked up that much anymore. Um, I think he started losing games. Maybe people got bored of him, but I literally don't see him anymore at all. So I decided to leave him off this tier list. Whale has never felt good in support, by the way. I think I've only seen one Whale support win all season, and I'm not capping on that. Um, so if you're going to play him, you play him in soul lane. But a lot of soul laners have like straight away from playing the Whale. Uh, I still think he's pretty good in lane, but he's just, he's just not where he was. So... Uh, Whale's not there, but yeah, I mean, this is the tier list. This is what I see personally. This is what I think should be banned every game, like at least these two. You, know, you don't have to ban these characters every game. I would like you to, but at least these two should get banned. Here's what I just think is really good support, mid, jungle, ADC, and solo. Again, you can play whatever the hell you want. I, I play RDO. I have good RDO games. I think Baron's clean. Um, I would love to play like E set support. I don't think it's that good right now, though. And same thing with Nox. I don't think it's as good as it was, but you can play whatever you want. These are just characters I would recommend, especially if you're trying to climb. I think these are very strong right now. And some of these are, again, hidden gem picks. I don't think a lot of people realize are really strong right now. So yeah, we'll just try these out if you haven't already. But guys, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tier list. And uh, if you did, I'll be happy to make some more for some next patches coming up. All right, see you later. Peace out, peace out.